Hey, it's Harcourt from Play. In this video, I'll show you how you can take a Play prototype all the way to a published app in the App Store. Now, the project we're going to do here is this timer. So you can see on my simulator over here, I can choose a time. Let's just do five and press play. And now it's going to count down from that selected value. And then when we get to zero, it's going to reset back and I can start a new timer. So that's the app we're going to publish to the App Store. Now, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and publish it from play. So I'm going to click this publish button and we have a whole video series on how to do this in more detail. So you can go ahead and watch that if you'd like. I have links that below. On the right side here in this export to Xcode module, let's just press export project. It's going to open this pop-up, which we can walk through. We're going to do a new Xcode project, make it Swift UI, and then we need this module name to be different than the title of the project. Right now, the project is called Countdown Timer. So this one's not going to work. So we're just going to call this one Timer instead. Then I can press continue. Now I can go through and select which assets, styles, components, pages, and variables I'd like to include in my play package, which is what I'll be exporting. Now you can see I don't have any assets, but I do have styles, components, pages, and a lot of variables. And I want all of those included. So I can just go ahead and click export to Xcode. Clicking that's gonna open this pop-up. And now I need to name this. Again, this name has to be different than the package name. So we can go back to our original name, Countdown Timer, or we can use the name of the app, which in this case, I am going to do color countdown. Now we go ahead and save that. And now it's gonna open this other window where we can open our Xcode project. So I'll double click that. For security reasons, your Mac is going to pop up this alert, just letting you know that this is downloaded from the internet. This is all coming from play, so there's no malware in there. So you can go ahead and click trust and open. And now it's gonna open this project in Xcode. So once we're in Xcode, I wanna show you a few things before we actually start archiving it and publishing it. So first, I'm gonna click on these package dependencies. So you can see here's our timer, and you can see here's our play SDK. So these are packages we're loading in from the Play app into Xcode. And this project is what allows Xcode to have a one-to-one -one version of what you've created in Play. So in Xcode, we can go ahead and press Play here, and this is going to open the simulator. Now you can see, here's our simulator over here. We'll go ahead and close the Play simulator. So now that Xcode simulator has loaded, you can see it looks one-to-one -one with the Play project. So I can still select one of these, press Play, and it's gonna count down exactly the same way that it did in Play, in Xcode. Now, one thing I want to note is sometimes people will get an initial error here if they're not logged into an account on Xcode. Essentially, this simulator would not build the project. It'll just say build failed instead of build succeeded. If that's the case, then you need to click on this top thing here, which has all of these app settings, go into signing and capabilities, and you're going to need to sign in. You can see I am not signed in right now. So sometimes it's kind of hit or miss whether you'll get that error or whether we're actually build. So the next step, whether or not you got the error or if it ended up working for you is to create an Apple developer account. So I'm going to go over to my browser here and we need to create an Apple developer account. I already created one, but if you have not created one, you can just walk through the process. Apple has some really good documentation on how to do it. But once you have, you'll log in here, sign in, sign in. And now we can go back into Xcode to log into our account. Once we're back in Xcode, now let's log into our account that we just created. So I'm going to go into this team section here and add an account. And now I can just log in with my Apple ID. Now I'm logged in and I can close this modal here. And now you'll see that I have my team selected. Next thing we need to do is create a bundle ID. So we're going to go back into our browser to do that. Back in our browser, now we're going to create a new bundle ID for this app. A bundle ID is just a string that's associated with this app in the App Store. So again, on our browser, in the Apple Developer page, in this Program Resources section, we're going to create that bundle ID. We'll do that by clicking on Identifiers in this middle section that says Certificates, IDs, and Profiles. So we'll click Identifiers, and now we're going to create a new identifier. So we'll press this button, and we'll make sure it is an Apple ID continue, make sure it's an app. If you wanted to create an app clip as well, you could do that. We're just going to do an app here. And now on this page, we can register our app ID. So we're going to use a description and then we're actually going to create the bundle ID. For the description, I'm just going to put the name of the app. So let's just do color countdown timer. 
For our bundle ID, we're gonna first make sure that we are using an explicit bundle ID, and then we're gonna follow Apple's best practices, which means this reverse domain name style string, and also using all lowercase. So it'll be com dot domain name, which can be your company's name or your freelance name, or just your name name, which is having to use here, and then your app name. So let's go ahead and do com dot harcourt dot count down timer. Excellent. Now, next, you need to check out the capabilities, app services, and capability requests, and make sure that anything is relevant for your app is checked off. Now, for me, my app is just a countdown timer, so I don't need to access Wi-Fi information, for example. But if your app does, you need to make sure that you've checked that off so it's enabled. Once you have gone through each of these sections, checked off anything that is relevant, then you can press continue, and then you can register your bundle ID. And now it will show up here in your list of identifiers. Now that we've created our bundle ID, now we can create an app in App Store Connect. So I could go back to the Apple Developer homepage and navigate to apps from there, or just look up App Store Connect. And on this page here, the homepage for App Store Connect, again, logged into that same account, just click on apps. Now you'll see I don't have any apps created here, so we'll create our first one, either by clicking add apps or clicking the plus button next to the apps. That's what I'm gonna do here to either add a new app or a new app bundle. Because I'm just creating one timer app, we're gonna do new app. But if you had, let's say, several different timer apps you wanted to have all links together, you could create a new app bundle. But again, we're just gonna do new app. And now we can fill out the basics here. So the platform we want is iOS. Then for the name of the app, we're gonna do color countdown timer. Choose a primary language. For me, that's going to be English US. But again, choose the one that's best fit for your app. Now we can choose the bundle ID that we've created. So the one we want here is this color countdown timer, link that. And now we can create an SKU, which is just a internal, not public string that helps identify your app. So I'm gonna do my name of my app, color countdown, and then just my initials, HHA. And then you can choose the user access. We don't need to limit this access. Anyone can have access to our timer app, so we'll just do full access. And then go ahead and create that app. Apparently my SKU has already been used. So I just need to edit that. So maybe we'll do color countdown timer and now create. So Apple's pretty good at letting you know when there's any errors in the process, notifying you about what those are. So you can go ahead and fix them before you continue moving on. So now we have our app created in App Store Connect. See, color countdown timer here, excellent. Now let's go back into Xcode and connect that bundle ID and finish up a few things we need to do before we archive this. Now that we're back in Xcode, let's go ahead and add that bundle ID. So back on the signing and capabilities page, in this bundle ID section here, we're gonna type in the exact same thing. So remember that, or you'll remember what yours was, mine was com.harcourt.countdowntimer. So now I have my bundle ID linked. Next, we can add our app icon. And the app icon is just a little icon that shows up in the app store when you're searching through different apps and also on the homepage of your iPhone once you've installed an app. So we're gonna add that for our app in Xcode. So the way we'll do that is go over into this drop down here and drop down again. And we're gonna go to this asset section. This is where any assets you exported as part of your play package will live. But because we don't have any, there's none here. But you will see this option for an app icon. Now, if you don't have this, you can go down to this plus button here and in this iOS section, then you can add that app icon, which I've already done here. So now we just need to add that app icon into this section here, either by dragging and dropping it or just by double clicking it. And I already have my timer app icon ready to go. Open that and now it should be good. The next asset we're gonna do is a launch screen. And this is just gonna show up when the whole app is loading. So it's gonna look just like the initial screen of our app. So we're gonna go back down to that plus button. This time for iOS, we're gonna do iOS launch image. And now you're gonna see a bunch, a bunch here, and we need to upload launch screens for each one of these. Now, I actually don't want to do landscape for any of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and unselect landscape. And now I'm gonna fill all these in and I'll see you in just a second. Great, now we've uploaded our launch images for each of these screen sizes. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is archive this build. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we're archiving it to an actual device, not a simulator. Because of course, the end product here is going to be on an actual device, not on the simulator. So on this device dropdown, we are going to not select any of these iOS simulators. We can either select my iPhone or we can do any iOS device. 
that's what we're going to do here. Again, any iOS device, not any iOS simulator device. So we'll select that. And now we can go ahead and archive. We're going to go up to this top bar, find product, and then select archive. Now it is going to archive that for us. You'll get a notification that your build has succeeded or that it has failed. And it'll tell you exactly what issues need to resolve. But once it's succeeded, you're going to get this window pop up. And now we can choose to distribute the app. This is the one here, this color countdown. Go ahead, click distribute app. And now we can walk through this whole distribution process. We wanna do App Store Connect. Again, that's what we've already set up over here. And now we can just do distribute. And now I'll see you back here when this is finished uploading. And now our color countdown version 1.0 has finished uploading. Now I can either just go back to App Store Connect and hit done, or I can click here to take me back to App Store Connect and I'll see you there in a second. And now we're in the home stretch. So now we're back in App Store Connect and we're gonna go into our app to add some additional information. On this page that opens, which is the 1.0 prepare for submission, we're gonna fill in some screenshots and then some additional information. So let's go ahead and choose our iPhone and iPad screen sizes. Now let's do iPad. Next, we'll add promotional text, descriptions, keyword, and all of our support URLs. I'm gonna do that and I'll meet you right back here. Now that all that information is in, let's continue scrolling and see what else we need to put in. Well, copyright's one. I'm just gonna do Hardcore 2025. If you have a copyright for your organization, you're gonna to wanna to put that in right there. Next, we have App Clip and iMessage app. Since we're not including an app clip as part of this app or an iMessage app, we don't need to worry about those sections. Next, we have the build. This is where we connect our Xcode build to this app in App Store Connect. So let's go ahead and click add build. And now we can see this is our build here. You can see that it's missing compliance and we'll check on that in just a second. Now that we've added that build, you'll see the status here is missing compliance. So we can click manage. It's going to open this pop up where we can select what type of encryption algorithm our app is using. In my case, I'm not using any of these algorithms, so I can click none. But if your app uses either a proprietary encryption or a standard encryption, you'll need to mark those or both here and click save to update that status. Now we can continue to go down and here's the app reviewer information. So for our app, we don't have a sign, sign in required. So we don't need to provide sample username and password. So I can just unselect sign in required. But if you do have that in your app, you'll need to make sure sign in required is turned on and you'll need to provide a sample username and password. You also need to provide contact information so that the review team can contact you if there's anything missing or wrong with your app, which would cause it not to be approved. There's also a section here for notes and attachments that can help the app reviewer review your app correctly. So if there's any relevant information, you can just put that right in here and they'll be able to see that when they're reviewing your app. And then lastly, we have this app store version release. So you can choose when you want this to be released after it has been approved. So if you want it to automatically release as soon as it's approved, you can click that option. You can also choose to automatically re release at a certain time, or you can choose to manually release. That's what I'm gonna do here. This just requires that I go into App Store Connect after I've gotten approved and submit this myself. Now we just need to press save on this page and all of our information is saved, good to go. Now we need to go to a couple other sections to add additional information. So in this general section, we're gonna do app information. And this is where we can fill in some additional information about this release. So we have the name here for the subtitle. I'm just gonna paste this in. You can also, we already have our bundle ID in here and that SKU and the Apple ID, all of this we already submitted in that original um, create app modal. You can also choose the category. So I think my category here is just a timer. So it'll probably be productivity. Is that an option here? It is. You can also add a secondary category if that is applicable for you. Not really for me, so we're good. Then you need to set up a content right, so we'll just click on this. Again, my app does not contain any third-party content, so I'm gonna click that here. But if yours does, whether it's music or images or whatever it may be, you need to make sure and do yes. Click done, and you're good to go. We also have this license agreement, which is good. Next, we need to set up age ratings. So click on that. Just go through this whole list and anything that's applicable here, you need to make sure and press yes. For me, again, it's a basic timer. I'm gonna mark no on all of these, so I'll see you in a second once I've done that. So now I've gone through all the steps there. All of that is about violence or inappropriate content. Now on this last page, I'm just gonna mark that this is not applicable because I don't have any age-related content, and then I can go ahead and save this. 
Next, we can add app encryption documentation. Again, mine does not use encryption of any kind, so I don't need to worry about the section. And then you have your app store regulations and permits. Um, so make sure you have all of this stuff filled in. It should have an option here to get started to fill out all this information if you have not done so already for previous apps you've submitted. Then you have app store server notifications. We could set up URLs for these servers. I don't think I need to worry about that right now because I'm not adding in any in-app purchases. Then if there's any shared secrets, you can fill that in here and any additional information. Next, let's go into the app privacy section. So for your privacy policy, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a privacy policy URL. So we can go ahead in here and add that in, save it. Next, we need to go through this process here. So we'll just click get started. This is all about data collection for privacy. So we are not going to collect data in this app. So I can just click no. Last thing we wanna make sure we do before we submit this, we are gonna go down into this pricing and availability page, and we need to set up any pricing if we want this to be a paid app. So let's go ahead and add pricing. You can choose a base region or base country. I'm gonna do the US and you can choose a price here. I want this to be free, so I'm gonna do $0, click next. It'll also let you set the prices for different regions if you wanna have price parity. So in this case, all of mine are gonna be free. Next, next to confirm that. And now our pricing is set up again, totally for free. Then you can also choose where your app is available. So we'll set up that app availability. In this case, I'm cool with my timer app being used for all countries and regions, but if you want it to be a specific region or only pre-order for certain countries, then you can click on those as well. I'm just gonna click next because all countries are reason, good to go. And I'm just going to confirm it here. Excellent. So now let's go back to that page now that we have that then you can continue to fill out any of these other categories if they're relevant for you. All the things we've gone through today are necessary for you to publish your app, but some of these are also optional. So nominations, right now I don't wanna nominate this app for anything, but if you wanted to, you could do that in here. Same thing for in-app purchases, subscriptions, promo codes, Game Center, all of that is irrelevant to my app here, but if it's relevant for you, make sure to just go through all of these and you can look at Apple's documentation to help you figure out how you can do all of that. So now we're good to go. I'm going to go back into this prepare for submission. We are going to click add for review. Now doing this, this is either going to review or let me know what I need to do that's a blocker for me to review. Again, the App Store and App Store Connect are really good at letting you know specifically what you need to update before you can proceed. So let's take a look at this. An admin must provide information about the app's privacy policies in the app privacy section. Okay, great. So let's go back into that app privacy and we need to update our, oh, we just need to publish this. Great, publish that. Excellent, so now we should be good to go. So now let's go back into prepare for submission and let's time, this time let's add it for review. And now we're ready to submit our app for review. All I have to do for that is just click the submit to app review button. This will then put it in the hands of the app store review team and they will either approve or deny. If they approve it, then the next step for us, because I set up that I want to manually release this is just to officially release it to the App Store, officially publish it. But again, if you have automatic release turned on, then it will happen automatically once it's approved. If it's denied, again, Apple does a really good job of telling you exactly why they denied it. And they also have recommendations on what you could do to give yourself a better chance for approval. So we're gonna go ahead and press the submit to app review button. So now we have submitted our app and now we're just waiting for approval from the App Store review team. So in this video, we took our prototype in play published it to Xcode, set up the relevant things in Xcode, created an Apple developer account and a new app in App Store Connect. Then we connected that through a bundle ID and selecting the build, filled in the relevant information in App Store Connect and submitted it. This is possible without a single line of code written. We took it all from Play using Play Package. So I hope this goes to show how easy it is to take your idea and make it a reality using Play. Thanks so much for watching this video.